Nestled onto a hillside in the Berkshire Mountains of Massachusetts is a 48-acre estate that is a playground for the imagination. This is Nomkeg, the creation of two people, a devoted owner and an inventive landscape architect who filled this estate with some of the most vibrant, original, and luminous gardens on the North American continent. Nam Keg is a work of art. It's um, the product of many years of uh, applying the art form of landscape architecture to a piece of property in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. The house was built in 1885. It began as a summer estate of the Choate family. The original landscape design for Nong Keg was created by a man named Nathan Barrett. It was of its time rather Victorian and stiff, but it did fit well into the site. More than flowers grew at Nong Keg. Mabel Choate, the daughter of Nong Keg's first owner, spent her summers there. She was well-educated, strong-willed, good-natured, with a lively sense of adventure. In 1926, when she took charge at Nam Keg, she met Fletcher Steele, one of the country's best-known landscape architects. Fletcher Steele and Mabel Choate met at the Berkshire Garden Club. She wanted him to come back to Nam Keg and take a look, with an eye to adding a new feature, an outdoor room. And as they were approaching the Stanford White Mansion from the back end, he said to her, Oh, Miss Choate, I couldn't possibly work for anyone whose back door looked like that. I think that set a tone. I wouldn't say it was a romantic tone, but it was certainly playful. And that never changed over the three decades they worked together. Together, Miss Choate and I agreed that the bones of what had been first done were good and should not only be preserved where possible, but that the old spirit should be followed in all that was to come. Nothing must look up to date. Fletcher Steele. Their first project would be an enclosed garden that would replace the simple lawn at the south end of the house. He knew it needed to have walls that would give it a sense of enclosure, but not cut off the view. To plan an inner wall required no thought, but just how to build an enclosed outdoor room with no obstruction of the view was another matter. But in fact, Steele had seen a solution to this problem years before. In Europe, as a tourist and then a wartime ambulance driver, he had been inspired by colonnades, where rows of columns framed the view beyond. This design became the garden's outer walls. Still, he needed a way to set the proportions of the garden. Steele noticed as they were walking around the front of the mansion that there was a very fine sculpture in a niche buried under some ivy. So they decided to make the cornerstone of the room. In deciding where to place the sculpture, they asked a farmhand to get up on top of a stepladder, and they moved it around till they looked just right. That was the corner of the room, the fourth corner of the room. In the afternoon garden, steel mixed an extraordinary range of elements. Rustic American paving stone, Spanish ironwork, an Italian lattice grapevine, and a view that is absolutely American. A good garden abounds in suggestions of the past. Fletcher Steele. At Nam Keg, one thing led to another. After the afternoon garden was complete in the late 1920s, they noticed that the view to the South Lawn was completely unacceptable. It was basically open stretch of dirt. 
The only recourse was to create an abstract form in the manner of modern sculpture, with swinging curves and slopes. To do it took cutting and hauling and scraping, then doing it all over again because it was necessary to learn what to do while doing it. There, Steele was dealing with a view to the distant mountains, which he decided to echo in the foreground with a shaped lawn done with bulldozers and eventually hand shoveling. So it's what he described as an abstract sculpture. The eye is led to a pagoda at the end that gives you a bit of a focal point. In another direction, he created a rock outcropping as a punctuation mark. I think the South Lawn is really the masterpiece of Namkek. Not all of Steele's gardens were based on European elements or Berkshire topography. In fact, the next big project was inspired by Mabel Choate's souvenirs from China. Steele traveled to China and Japan in 1934. He came away with a new sense of the importance of space composition in the garden. Mabel Choate went to China in 1935. She came away with a collection of Asian carving and statuary. It became Steele's job to make this new collection seem at home in New England. They commandeered a piece of the old flower garden. One of the challenges was how to achieve a patina of age on something that was very new. Steele came up with the idea of using dark reds, which were recorded in one little corner of the garden that you can still see, that were then painted over with whitewash and hosed down. So it looked like you were seen through the centuries. This is a traveler's garden, bringing home to America the best of foreign life to enrich our ways here. Of course, it is no more Chinese than an old parlor in Salem filled with Chinese objects. There are elements of China. There are real artifacts and traditional building techniques. But the essence of a Chinese garden is that it is inwardly focused. Namkeg's Chinese garden puts you very much in contact with the view beyond, which is an essentially American idea. When the Chinese garden is completed, the secret of the whole valley as seen from this place will be reduced to one continuous curve. All of Namkeg and the landscape beyond will be like the unfolding of a seashell. The house was not designed to provide framed views. Steele did some very interesting things, making sure that the view from the Great Hall was absolutely unimpeded by putting the sculpture in a place where you would see it through the windows of the library by providing Mabel Cho with a marvelous view of the Rose Garden from her window. Steele preserved the best of the original design, the footprint of the old flower gardens, the evergreen alleys, and the circular marble fountain. But he exercised his wildly imaginative vision whenever Mabel Choate gave him the chance. Mabel Choate's cutting garden was at the bottom of a very steep hill. About 1937, she said, I'm really tired of falling down this hill to get to my cutting garden. Would you build me some steps? And knowing steel, she said, make them very simple, something inexpensive. So he got to work on a design based on an Italian water staircase. And I can imagine that when Mabel Choate saw these drawings, she rolled her eyes, because there's nothing simple about what he designed. Steele chose concrete because it would be malleable. After they were finished, 
they decided they were boring. So the steps were painted red, orange, and yellow. But it was a design that obviously pleased no one because soon they were painted blue. They had become one of the icons of American landscape design, probably the most recognizable, most photographed feature in any American garden. Nineteen fifty five saw the completion of the Chinese Garden Wall, pierced by the same type of circular moon gate that Steele had photographed in China twenty years before. The moon gate is the closing of the circle, the end of this thirty year effort, thirty year adventure. Mabel Choate died in nineteen fifty eight. Fletcher Steele in 1971. Mabel Choate understood that no one was going to buy Nom Keg and keep it as Nom Keg. Steele persuaded Mabel Choate that the only way to see Nom Keg acquire the true patina of age was to make sure it was placed in the hands of what was essentially a museum of landscapes, the trustees of reservations. Of all the works of man, the garden alone becomes more beautiful as the generations pass through it, as lichens gather on the ancient weathered rocks, as the seedling which we have nourished grows to spread great branches over the undreamed children of tomorrow. Fletcher Steele.